Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in session with Sumit, we have Mr. Aman Deep with us in the second episode of Data X. Aman started his journey as a data science enthusiast, participating in various Kaggle competitions. Aman also worked as a freelancer for various machine learning projects. Aman is a self-driven problem solver, and when his hobby became hey his passion, he Subscribe left Wadi University to pursue and his master's in data science. Icon. I welcome and thank you, Aman, for taking his time and talking to us. Thanks, Amit. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, Aman, uh, first of all, since our viewers are not uh, are not introduced to you, can you just briefly introduce yourself so that uh, we all can understand you in a better way? Sure. So, hey guys, uh, I am Amandi Prati. Um, I'm, I'm pursuing a master's in data science uh, at Duke University in, in the US. And before coming here, I was working with Sumit at uh, Upgrad, working as a content strategist, making data science, machine learning uh, courses uh, for online programs. And, and before that, I have a computer science and engineering background. So that, that's like... That's okay. So Aman, uh, my first question to you is, can you briefly, uh, can you briefly explain me about your journey that you have taken for this admission to, uh, to your master's in data science as, at Duke University? Sure. So uh, first of all, all, I would like to point out that you said journey. So this journey is, uh, is about one year long. So generally students, uh, let's say if they have to, let's say if someone is planning to get uh, to, to a master's program in next year, 2021 fall. So they would, they would generally start one year before or some, some people even like one and a half year before. So I also did my research. Uh, I started uh, one year, like 12 months or 15 months. So, this journey starts with first of all finding the answer to the question why do we want to do a master's degree right someone looking to do a master's degree obviously has a bachelor's degree and they know their experience from bachelor's they have been to a university or a college and they know uh, the the things that uh, a, a university education entails so uh, and some people also have a work experience. So, so there is all, always a motivating factor when you decide that, okay, I want to do this X, Y, Z degree. So the first and foremost thing is to find out your motivating factor. Why do we want to do a master's degree? Once you find it, then everything becomes really easy. The next step is to uh, find which which universities uh, do you want to like apply to? Or even a broader question would be, which country would you want to uh, choose for your higher education? India uh, or Europe or, uh, or, or the US, Canada, some, like some people also go to Australia and things like that. And that, that depends a lot on the degree that you want to pursue. Since our viewers are interested in data science, so I'm guessing most of them would uh, want to apply either to either to European universities or American universities and even Canadian ones. And finding universities is also uh, a bit time consuming. Uh, uh, you, you, first of all, you have to find out like, given that data science is so broad, you have to like find out your, your specialization, okay? There are so many specializations, which uh, do you want? Are you interested in machine learning or, you know, are you interested in doing statistical science? Because there are colleges which, which uh, provide pure statistics degree and, and which also allow you to get a data science position, uh, position after you graduate from there. So finding universities is a big uh, part of this journey. I, I would suggest first and, and also one big part of finding universities is what kind of financial background do you have or not background, but what, what kind of, do you want to pursue your master's degree? Because we all know that American universities are really expensive and 
and and the european ones are not as as expensive as the american ones so that all, the expense factor also plays a big role in your in choosing your colleges um personally i i did when i was choosing my college i only thought about doing a masters in the us because because i knew that you know data science opportunities are much more richer in the us than than in india or even europe or uh, in other in any other part of the globe so once i had us fixated that okay i want to do my masters degree in the us i researched on okay which because data science is closely related related with computer science and stats and maths so i looked at okay which are the top universities in stats maths and cs and also whether my background whether i am a viable candidate for those universities because i had to be realistic i wouldn't like want to apply to the very best university if i am say like from a mediocre or low tier university uh, so the next step was to choose about 10 to 12 universities which is what generally people do uh, and select them based on you know your priorities do you want your degree to be technical then focus on cs and maths or do you want your degree to be more business side sided then you know choose uh, that kind of those kind of universities which have a good business program uh, because most universities the data science degree is not uh, situated in in one particular department what happens is they offer these degrees and they allow you to take classes from uh different departments let's say business uh, schools or maths or cs and that's how the degrees are right now um so yeah after you find your universities and you shortlist them the next step is to apply and uh so applying requires you to have some fixed uh things uh, ready uh and these are application materials which consists of your test scores uh your essays and uh your letters of recommendations from your professors or your uh or your colleagues your bosses managers um and some university some universities also have some extra components such as a video interview uh, or a video essay where they ask you like a prompt and then you have to speak about that thing so i also did that like uh the the most important thing or at least we have this perception that tests are the most important thing so i started for my gre preparation i gave about one one and a half month for it and i was studying about like two two to three hours a day uh so in 45 days uh, i gave my gre and then after gre i gave the toefl exam uh because once you have once you have given your gre exam giving toefl becomes really easy because half of the exam uh is uh the preparation that you do during gre you are also preparing for toefl toefl automatically the, there are like only two components of toefl which like you have to prepare and you can prepare for toefl in about two weeks or three weeks uh once you have given gre so i gave my gre and then toefl exam and once you have these exams and these test scores ready the only thing that's required is for you to write your statement of purpose and asking your professors or your uh, managers if you are employed at a company for you know a, a reasonable amount of time let's say one year uh so then you ask people who have worked with you and who have managed you they 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 in, in a way they sponsor you by writing uh, recommendation letters and uh, so i was i also did that while writing recommendation letters i would i would suggest you so people have this perception that uh, if someone if someone writes so there is this thing between a go- good recommendation letter versus the position of the person who is writing the recommendation letter i would say choose someone who can write really good recommendation uh, letter for you and not prioritize on his position 
for example if you have really uh, worked uh, really close with a professor at your university uh, and if he can write a really good recommendation letter for you versus let's say the head of the department uh, let's say if you worked with him like for a couple of weeks on something uh, so i would choose the professor over the head of the department because the professor knows you really well and he can write a strong letter for you which is what universities look for they don't look uh, like at the position of the guy who is writing the letter they look for the content of the letter uh, and and what can how in how much depth does this guy know this uh, the the person who is applying to the university so after like you have your recommendations letter and your statement of purpose is the next big thing a uh, statement of purpose in one line is again why do you want to apply to this university and even a broader question uh, that you answer in that letter is why do you want to pursue a masters degree in the first place and the stronger your uh, answer to this question is the better your chances become to getting an admission into uh, into the college um and i guess yeah that's it uh once you have your letters ready and your test scores ready you go to these websites and apply to to the colleges that you had shortlisted and then you just wait for the uh for the decisions which so i would say uh let's say if you give gre in august to october period which is which is generally what people do and the college deadlines are in uh early december they start in early december and go until the end of january so that's when you like apply send hit the send button and then you wait until february march april is the decision period so yeah this this was like a brief of the journey that i had followed um yeah yeah so uh, amandeep you were talking about the gre scores and the toefl sto- scores so mm-hmm. can you briefly help us with uh, what are the various cutoffs like or what a person should look for so how good should be a person in these type of tests hmm so because most of the people are interested in masters in data science program i would say so gre has two components uh, a quantitative section and a verbal section quantitative is related to math and verbal is the generic english section uh for ms in data science or machine learning or all these quantitative fields they focus more on the quantitative quantitative score so gre has uh, is a is a, an exam the total score is given out of 340 170 each section um a good score for a masters program would be anything above 160 would be like i i, I would suggest 160 plus should be a minimum at least in the quantitative tip section and the the more the better in quant section verbal does not they do not prefer like for you to have like really shine in the verbal section they i, I think so first of all all these universities most of them do not have a hard cut off on the gre scores and if you go to their websites they will if they have a hard cut off they will mention it most of them don't so but but still like a mental cut off like there are scores which are considered good or bad so in verbal i would say anything about 155 will be good enough so you won't be denied an admission if you have 155 plus if you have a good quant score and if your other like profile is good so yeah 160 if you are looking for hard numbers 165 plus in quant and 155 plus in verbal should be like a good score in gre toefl has hard cutoffs so each university mentions what score what is the minimum score that they require the minimum overall score and some universities also have a minimum section wise score so toefl has four components reading writing speaking and listening uh so they they each section is out of 30 so they can say let's say okay we require you to have 25 plus in each section 
or so the total test is 120 so they can also say 100 plus is our cut off uh, but tofl is also easier once you have given gre uh, yeah so those are the, like the cut offs and the tentative okay so aman um, talking about uh, the the opportunity so once i do masters from uh, from a foreign university considering duke university and if i pursue hey some online Subscribe distance education channel. sitting and in also india press itself this bell icon. what are the difference like if i do a online degree because currently there are various online degrees that are floating around and uh, there are most of the uh, most of the education like universities those who are offering these online uh, degrees so is yeah. pursuing an online degree better or whether we should go and uh, do this degree in person yeah so yeah if you compare an online degree versus an offline degree in an online degree first of all employers don't trust an online degree as much as they do as much as they trust an offline like an on on campus proper university degree and the reason is because in an on campus degree you have a lot of peer support you have your professors and uh people who want to do research later in their lives there is no point of doing an online degree so people who are interested in research obviously can like put an x on an online degree because it it won't lead them to anywhere uh people who want to advance in their careers online degree is a good option especially given that online degrees are cheaper as compared to on campus degrees then they also have to think about what are the career opportunities that they will get after doing these degrees if you do a degree in the us you have an advantage that you can get a job in the us and the the scope of data science is much more broader and is much better i would say than in india so a lot of people do masters because it's a, like a ticket to the us and to the us career to the us corporate sector uh in an online degree you wouldn't have that uh, you would be limited to the uh, limited to the indian job sector and you have to ask the question am i a a good self learner uh if 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 you can if you trust yourself that okay i'll do this degree and i'll be you know i'll make use of this education in my career then i would say go for it uh but in general a non campus degree is still more valuable and gives you much more opportunities in terms of career in terms of research than an online degree okay so amandeep now i wanted to understand better that Uh, about this fee structure and uh, your total expenses in in getting this complete degree so how much a person should uh, like what investment he should be ready with to before before applying to these universities i see so there is obviously like a big cost in the application process itself and i would say it's about between like around 1.5 to 2 lakhs before you come here and and that's exclu- excluding even the ticket so gre and tofl these are expensive exams like uh 15000 rupees each and then applying let's say if you finalize 10 universities applying to each university is about 10000 rupees so uh yeah about 2 lakhs uh uh rupees you you spend that only during the uh, application process and then obviously there is the university fees which masters generally costs between 40 to 80 lakhs it's a really broad range because there are public universities and there are private universities private ones are obviously expensive my university is private which is why it's expensive and and it's around that 80 lakh mark for 2 years um yeah so that's like the fee structure but then you also have scholarships uh public universities offer much more they have a bigger like pool of scholarships than private universities and scholarship are like of different types there is a need based scholarship where if the if let's say in some universities allow you to write a letter to them in your application 
if if let's say you you feel that you you would need a scholarship and if you can't attend that university without a scholarship so there is a need based based scholarship component then there is what i call as a profile based scholarship once you have an admission uh you can ask the university that okay i i can't i need some sort of scholarship because i have an admission from this other better university so it's the same process when you you know you have offers from multiple companies and you negotiate your offer mm. so universities do that because they want to have that better student if they know that oh this student got admission into that much more reputed universities it's, it's better for us to have him uh yeah we'll reduce your fees but come here i have a guy in my class who had a had an offer from stanford and he's studying for free here because this this was a new program and they wanted him because a university uh uh i mean students are students are what make a universities and when they go out uh, the reputation of the universities depend on the how how the how how these people do in their corporate lives right so there's like need based versus profile based and the story doesn't end here after you come to the us you can get uh, there are various opportunities to do jobs on the campus broadly there are two types there is teaching assistantships where you help a teacher teach a course or you know you grade and stuff like that but there is this other position a research assistant where you help a professor in his research so you you are like sort of an employee to this employer and your employer is this professor and what happens in in this uh, so this is called an ra research assistant if you get an ra in a public university most of the time your fees for that entire semester or as long as you work as an ra is waived off and on top of that you get a stipend so it's it's sort of like a phd you become like a phd student so so that's that's a big advantage which also uh, which is why a lot of people consider public universities on like over private ones mine is a private so even if i get an ra here they won't waive off my fees Uh, but i know a lot of my friends have their entire two years of fee waived off except for the first semester because first semester generally goes in finding these jobs so they get their fees waived off from their second semester onward which is a bi- makes a big difference you know let's say if your degree is 50 lakhs they bring the cost down to 10 lakhs okay you, you know your three because you also get a stipend so your living expenses are waived off in a way and you don't have any tuition so okay. yeah, that's yeah so uh, uh you talked about various uh, on on campus jobs now uh, if i'm looking for a teaching assistant job so like do you do i need to have something like do i do i need to qualify it or do i need to basically uh, do something for getting this job so how hmm. easy or how difficult it is to get this job because once i get into that university i'm definitely looking to uh, work for any any kind of these jobs because i need to manage my expenses so how right. difficult it is so for for a teaching assistantship job the only thing that they care about is how well have you done in that course in your past uh, let's say undergrad or in the same program so for example uh, let's say this xyz course you have done really well in your undergrad and you have uh, a, an a or an a plus in it and you have shown to the professor okay i i am i am i excel at this course so that professor will consider you for that job and uh, but if it's a different university there might be some friction because not all universities accept like a, a grade from the other university so let's if say there are two students one student who has done the same course from their university or a us university mm-hmm. and he has an a versus a, an indian student who has a 90 out of 100 they would i think prefer the the guy from the us universities because they trust their grading system much better than the 
So grade is the only criteria, I would say, if you want to apply for a TA position. For an RA position, it, it goes like an interview. You reach out to different professors from different department, which is a student's job. He has to look for all these jobs, either through university website or by talking to, you know, just like knocking on their doors and saying, hey, Prof, I want this. Do you have any opportunities for me? I'm interested in this, let's say machine learning. Do you have a project? Um, and if they see that, okay, this guy is interested, then they sort of like interview you, which is not as, as hard as uh, a company's interview. They basically see, okay, whether this guy has the right background and the right motivation. And if they feel like, uh, cool, this guy uh, is strong enough to help me in my research, then they hire you. And they obviously interview multiple people if that position is really popular. Uh, and based on that, they decide. Okay. 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 Yeah. So Amandeep, now my next question is around, uh, uh, like currently I'm looking for, let's say I'm currently looking to uh, join any kind of any one of these universities. Now, if I pursue my, um, if I pursue my in masters from let's say Duke university, uh, what are the chances of getting, getting a job at, uh, at us and how much, you uh, how much money I can make back at working at US? Hmm. Um, uh, so the first big difference between a US university and an Indian university is uh, the placement agency. Indian, Indian universities or colleges have a dedicated department where, which, which they like call companies and ask them to hire students on campus in one day. That's not the case here. So here it's more like a student reaches out to different companies on their own through LinkedIn or through online applications. What the university provides is uh, resources in terms of, you know, a resume, a letter reviews or writing cover letters, or they have also like big alumni associations. So they can help you to connect to some alumni. Let's say if you're interested in, some company and if you ask them okay i want to i'm interested in this company this position so they can help you to connect to people from your university working there which makes it smoother for for you to get a job there uh, but they and there are virtual fairs i mean these days there are there are like virtual career fairs but in general they have like on campus career fairs where, where companies come and they talk about what kind of roles are they hiring for. So, and then they exchange contact information. So students go there and, you know, meet people from different companies and exchange uh, business cards and then later apply to these companies. But it's not like a placement uh, uh, process where, so, so the big thing is that you have to apply to different companies on your own. But I would still say if you are, you know, good at your, or uh, if you have good skills in whatever you're doing, then the chances of getting a job are, are really high. And I haven't seen anyone, at least in my class, not get a job. So the, the last cohort, it has hundred percent placement rate. Uh, people find jobs on their own because they are so skilled in, in their respective fields that they have in fact multiple interviews during the their last year uh and yeah and 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 regarding the salary depends on the field really uh for for data science and machine learning engineers first of all it depends on the city uh in a big city like new york or san francisco or chicago you, you can expect somewhere around 100 and hundred and twenty thousand dollars to an and plus and for medium tier cities you can expect 90 to 100 k uh yeah and and then there is obviously no upper limit if you apply to big companies and big cities for example a machine average salary of a machine learning engineer engineer i think is around 150 k which is a lot 
so that's the salary for data science and machine learning okay so uh, aman now um, like we are uh, we are almost done with the interview we i just wanted to uh, ask you that if you can give some tips and uh, some overall guidance to our viewers so that uh, if they are thinking for this particular path they can decide accordingly what they need to do and whether it is it is the correct path for them them or not hmm uh i would say the very so when you asked me the question of you know how was your journey the very first thing was to answer the question of why do an ms why do a masters degree i would say that is really really crucial uh so that's one tip that you know find like convince yourself that you want to do a masters degree don't uh just because three of your friends came here and you have you see that you have no other options uh uh don't just do it for that find your own uh reason that's one thing and the other thing is which i don't think like a lot of people tell this thing but become a uh, good writers so the writing process starts during uh, your application process itself you write your statement of purpose you also write your resume uh and uh and once you come here and you you all these jobs that you talked about research assistant ta they require you to either write emails and convincing emails not just hey prof i i want to do this job uh they basically look for your motivation and your background and a lot of it depends really boils down to your writing how good your writing is uh i would in fact say let's say a guy who has a really good profile but a very mediocre writing versus a guy who has like an above average profile but really good like exceptional writing so out of these two guys uh the guy with exceptional writing might have a better chance to get an admission or even a, like an an advancing his career because writing is really important so the other advice would be become good writers and it's not like a it's not like a course it's it's like a lifelong thing uh improving your writing so and a lot of people during their application process i know that they ask external agencies to write their statement of purpose i wouldn't recommend that because you can get like through that application process but you one once you come here it would be very difficult because you are writing all the time emails letters and things like that okay yeah so that those two would be my advices finding the reason for a masters and becoming good writers okay so that's it aman uh, that was a very informative session with you and uh, i again thank you for your time from your busy hey there. from your busy st- studying time to my channel and, uh, and yeah, also press it. this bell icon i i enjoyed it a lot so much thanks for having me yeah thank you